Yeah, I know. I've been missing an action for two weeks. Where have I been? Well, let me tell you something. I've been busy as a one-legged man at an ass-kicking contest. So don't start with me. <laughs> Welcome back, kids. Good to be back. Oh, my gosh. This has been a marathon. Had an order for six signs for a marina in uh, on Lake Washita in Arkansas, right outside of Hot Springs. And it's been about a two-week project counting... Uh, design, filming, editing, carving, finishing, the whole nine yards. So anyway, I'm glad to have it behind me. So, And as you can see, this is what I've been working on. Turned out so nice. Uh, anyway, I'll show you how I did it. Let's go look. For this video, I'm not going to go through all the steps and all the details because uh, on each one of these signs, because all three of them are basically cut the exact same. Uh, so I will show you how I set this up, though, to run uh, six different signs of the same size. So first thing I did was my, of course, my O2.02 .02 profile cut that I always do. That's the same on every sign. All of these signs are 24 inches by 14 inches. So that never changed. That toolpath is on all six signs. Same here, the border pocket, which is what makes this half inch wide black border around the sign, this here, that never changed. I just copied that basically uh, from one sign to the next. Uh, point one depth using a quarter inch downtown Jenny. And uh, really the only thing I changed was the fish and the text. This one was a 90 degree uh, groovy jenny. Some of them though were done with the 30 degree. And I even used a 60 degree. So yeah, this one, now that I think about it, the V bit that I used, it did vary from sign to sign. Then on the text, the this is another one that didn't change at all. I did no flat depth, <clears throat> and I used a 90 degree groovy jenny on all six signs. All of it's just the same as always. All of my boards were the exact same size, 25 and 3 quarter inches wide, 14 and a half inches tall, and roughly 0.6 uh, de thickness, which really they were more like 0.58, but I just left that 0.6 and cut them. Um, zeroed off the material surface and used my bottom left uh, XY, which is my G55. So all of that is just uh, nothing special, and this is replicated throughout all of them in this first video. This will be a two-part series. Uh, I'll have three more signs after this one, after these. Man, I'm telling you, this has been a marathon. And it, yeah, I'm, I'm wore out and ready to go to something else. Uh, like I always tell my wife, I ain't never been this tired and lived over it. Okay, I've got the file loaded. Uh, first thing I need to do is set my G55. So to do that, I go here into my probing. And here's all your G offsets for mine. I want my G55. And you see up here now it says G54, which is just the default. I changed mine to G55. And I don't even have to exit because now I need to do my probing. So, uh, but I can go ahead and do this. Go to work origin. And it's going to take me right up here where it needs to be at my G55. So I'm centered up perfectly over that corner there. Automatically. I don't have to worry about my X and Y ever. As long as I'm zeroing off of the bottom left corner, my X, Y is always going to be there. I don't have to worry about it. Only thing I got to do is probe the Z. 
I'm fixing to do that now. So I'm fixing to move my uh, spindle over just a little bit. And we'll get the Z from right there. Gotta flip it upside down. Unless you're using it here on the corner, which I'm not. I don't have to. Or I can. We can zero right there. But I'm gonna do it out here kind of in the middle of the board. Then all I gotta do is hit this center right here. And it's gonna probe. And just like that, it probed. So our Z is set. X and Y is already taken care of because that takes care of itself because of the G55 offset that I have set up uh, in my Masso. Go to my F2. Rewind. Cycle start. And it's going to come up here and prompt me to change that bit. So I've got to put in the quarter inch downtown Jenny. We'll do that right now. This is for a cabin. A guy owns some cabins on Lake Washita outside of Hot Spring. I don't know if y'all ever been to that part of Arkansas, but it is some kind of beautiful. Anyway, these are uh fishing cabins and he rents them out each one of the cabins is named after a fish that is local to uh, that area so we got crappie largemouth bass flathead catfish walleye and something else oh uh yeah uh, bluegill brim uh, i'm gonna measure the genie and then go to work. Uh, for the 90 degree groovy genie.
All right, let's get this groovy out of there. We'll put that IDC Woodcraft the hog in there. Cut this thing out. While I'm doing this, I want to thank y'all. The uh, that last video I did has been the best performing video I've ever done. It had like a thousand views in the first day or so. I mean, it was just way above average for me, and I was so happy about that. And that was because of y'all too. So thank y'all for. Your continued support, watching, subscribing, sharing, and of course, buying coffee or super thanks. I definitely appreciate y'all. All right, let's cut this thing out. Hey. What, baby? You need to get what from me? Mail. Oh, mail? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I already got the mail. <laughs> I already got the mail, baby. You, I know, you just want to go outside. All right, you want to take the puppies outside? Yes, and get your mouth. Okay, all right. Then. And stay out there. All right, as y'all can see, I got more uh, important business to take care of right quick. Punk just got here, so. <laughs> all right, so here I'm using my Rust Oleum, the 2X Paint Plus Primer. I always use flat black. But that's personal preference. Uh, sanding it off, I'm using Merca, Abronet, 80 Grit. All of this stuff will be uh, linked down below. And this is Minwax Helmsman's Spar Urethane. And uh, as I've noted on here several uh, videos before this one, you don't put this stuff on left-handed you're going to have a mess so i mean if you can't do it left-handed just don't do it at all but that's my advice to you <laughs> seriously though so i'm ready to start the largemouth bass sign but i want to show you something first my board's kind of bowed it's Stick it up in the middle a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I can't flip it over because the back side is not near as pretty as this side. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run that first .02 at uh, the profile. Then I'm going to stop it because I, all I want to see is where the profile cut is going to be. Then I'm going to come back and either shoot some screws or maybe brad nails somewhere in there where it won't affect the sign at all, but hopefully to get this pulled back down to where it needs to be. So let's just go ahead and do that uh, first. I already got the bit loaded, everything zeroed out. Rewind, cycle start. <laughs> I set the zero off the middle here. Not touching at all there on the end. Well, that didn't tell me much. Oh, 
I have to reset that zero again. No, I can do this. This one's going to tell me what I need to know. I can see where I can put the, uh, I think I'm just going to screw it down now that I know i got plenty of meat there to screw into. All right, so let me get that taken care of. Okay, I'm going to reset my Z now that, I, now that I have the board pulled down to where I think it needs to be. I can go back out to the middle and do it again. Okay, This is the 90 degree Groovy Genie. Fixing to uh, do the uh, text. Looks like the text turned out real good. So that's encouraging. Taking out the 90 degree Groovy Jenny, replacing it with the 60 degree, and this is going to carve all the detail in the bass. Let's do this. All right, we're ready to cut this joker out. This is the IDC one, IDC Woodcraft, the hog. All right, do this.
Here I'm gluing up my panel for the next sign, which will be the flathead catfish. And now I'm back to the bass. And y'all don't forget to clean up the back of your sign too. That's very important. If you want it to look professional, the back's got to be cleaned up and sanded and looking nice too. And this is the panel that we glued up uh, just a few minutes ago. All right, now we're starting the flathead catfish. Now we got to switch over to the 90 degree groovy jig so we can carve the text. Ooh. It's just going to say flathead up at the top. I don't know if y'all ever ate any flathead catfish, but boy, boy, there ain't nothing any better. Regular old channel cats like you get at your restaurant or fish houses as we have here in Arkansas are wonderful, but that flathead got them beat. But you can't buy them in a restaurant for some reason, or at least I don't know of any place where you can. Anyway, let's get back to work. Now time to switch over to the 8th inch downtown genie. This is going to carve out the uh, ooh, the roughing area, the bulk of the catfish itself. And uh, while I'm thinking about it, y'all be sure hit that like button. And if you haven't already, Please subscribe. I sure appreciate that. Ooh, hit over 1,300 subscribers last night. Thank y'all so much. That's just incredible. Thank y'all. All right, back to work. All right, that was quick. Time for the 60 degree groovy genie. We're going to finish out the catfish. And then we'll be cutting it out. We're just about through with this thing. Let's see, uh, V Car Pro says it should take about seven minutes to do this.
That's it for the catfish. The only thing left to do is cut it out. We'll use the IDC Woodcraft, the hog, for that. Well, that vector, that catfish, it must have had 10,000 nodes on it. I guess I didn't check that, but that's why it was just carving and just choo -choo 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 -choo. there wasn't a smooth line on that whole damn thing. But I bet it's going to look good once I get the paint on it. We'll find out here in just a little bit. Yeah, All right. Right here on the edge of it, I got a little knot that's wanting to pop out. You can see it move there. I'm just going to put a little super glue on that and bind it right down. Two P ten. This is the medium thickness. Let's get on down in that crack there. That's what she said. <laughs> Let that soak in for just a second. Then I'll flip it over and hit it from the back. That's what he said, right, guys? Because of. Well, actually, from the side here. Hit it with that activator. It'll be a done deal. Ta -da. It ain't moving no more. Now I can sand off that uh, CA glue and go to paint. There's a, there's still a lot of sawdust <clears throat> man glitter down in those cracks. And this little brush I bought it a couple years ago, Ace Hardware, just down the street. Man, you, this thing is perfect for getting in those little crevices and getting that bad stuff out of there. little air on it. Putting a little chamfer on that edge right there.
Oh, fine. Some of y'all may recognize this fella right here. This is Bryce Mitchell, MMA fighter and all-around badass. He uh, come by to buy some cedar boards from me. Super sweet guys. First time I ever met him. No relation that we're aware of. But anyway, I thought that was kind of neat. All right, that's it for this one. This was part one. Part two is coming up. Let me show you. This was the crappie that we did in this video. Ain't that sweet? Of course, got my logo on the back. Finish the back. And I'm going to give you a sneak peek for part two. Check this bad boy out. Striped bass. Turned out awesome. So the next video will be the striped bass, bluegill, and the walleye. Which, really, those are the three prettiest ones. So I'm saving the best for last. Anyway, thank y'all for watching, uh, subscribing, liking, sharing, the whole nine yards. I appreciate y'all so much. And I'll see you on the next video.